gold and silver markets seem to be playing by a new set of rules. It's setting up for a massive silver squeeze. And maybe, just maybe, this is why you have these four big cartel bullion banks who are notoriously known to be short coming over with hat in hand into the Shanghai Metals Exchange four weeks in a row. Maybe that's what this is talking about. The bottom line is, to me, silver represents um, the, the, the best, most undervalued opportunity, asset, I've ever seen. It's like, it's almost as if gold and silver markets seem to be playing by a new set of rules, I guess is what I would try to say. And um, it's almost as if commodities like Zoltan Bozar said, this is Bretton Woods 3, a system surrounded by commodities. It's as if commodities are worth more than currency nowadays, and this is a rush to do so. If you look at gold since 2000 as an example, it's massively outperformed the bond market, but what it has is that it, it has no counterparty risk. Wait a minute, everyone. We all agree that the crypto market never sleeps, but with countless newsletters out there, how do you choose the best one for you? Bitcoin Zella stands out with its simplicity and clarity. We've crafted an experience that anyone can dive into, whether you're a crypto expert or just a new to the crypto world. Now guess who keeps his eye on us? The author of best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And we want to take this opportunity and thank all the people who trusted us and we read every comment and the best part, it's free. Subscribing now means you will get all new information for free. Don't just follow the trends, stay ahead of them. Subscribe to Bitcoin Zella today and enjoy the new edge. Let's join Andy Sheckman in this video about those topics and more. The, the conventional wisdom is the central bank purchasing. That's what everyone's talking about, uh, that the central banks are buying at levels never seen before in the last three years. Uh, you look at a country like India as an example. The Reserve Bank of India just purchased 24 tons of gold in the first four months of, of this year, the first quarter plus, which is one and a half times what they bought all of last year in 2023. We're seeing some very interesting things as well, um, you know, in terms of the exchanges being bled down and and you look at for example what's happening right now off of comex just recently three fridays ago we saw 7560 kilo bars shipped out of of the comex to brinks hong kong brinks hong kong is a comex depository and the conventional wisdom is that nothing goes to brinks hong kong that isn't what's called exchange for physical where you know, these, these traders can buy in the West and deliver in the East. Uh, China is paying a offering a very nice arbitrage opportunity for the traders who have the ability to access both markets. It's about four bucks an ounce in silver, not so acute in gold, but ask yourself this question, who the hell's got $571 million to purchase uh, 243,000 ounces delivered off of Comex to Brinks Hong Kong, and the and the belief is is that they are then trucked over because these are all kilo bars, and and the Shanghai Exchange deals in kilo bars. The mini contract on Comex is kilo bars. So someone, some entity, and some people think it's HSBC Bank. I don't know who it is, but I can tell you that five hundred seventy one million dollars worth of kilo bars were delivered to Brinks Hong Kong. Some people believe it's then being trucked to the Shanghai Exchange, which uses kilo bars. And when you talk about the amount of, of central bank purchasing, it's off the charts. Um, and I don't think we're even being told how much these central banks are buying. But when you realize that not only are these banks accumulating gold, it is a trend of repatriation as well. And, you know, the, re the Bank of India just moved 100 tons of gold quietly out of the Bank of England and took possession of it. And, and you go back a few years, you start with the Bundesbank in Germany, the Dutch National Bank, uh, the, the Bank of Austria, Hungary, Turkey, Poland. We just saw the Bank of Saudi Arabia, all uh, several um, African banks and a couple more Middle Eastern banks all pull their gold out of the Bank of England and the New York Fed. So it's, a, it's, it's about slow repatriation. It's about slow accumulation. Not too fast to raise attention. But what I really do believe is happening is that the Western suppression of metals, as foolish as it is, which has originally been there to to suppress the demand for gold in a low interest rate environment, which is obviously changing, um, they're using that suppression, uh, the, the large short positions of the commercial banks to drain the exchanges, 
to do exchange for physical, to drain the COMEX, to drain the LBMA, and now even pulling metal out of the Shanghai exchange uh, because I think counterparty risk is something that is very acute. And the belief that, you know, um, wealth is found in, in a broke country's debt, uh, our treasuries, or, or a country that has chosen to inflate versus uh, being prudent with, with their, their fiscal policy and the monetary policies, uh, I think we are moving to a period of time where the rules are being changed, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's like, it's almost as if gold and silver markets seem to be playing by a new set of rules, I guess is what I would try to say. And um, it's almost as if commodities like Zoltan Bozar said, this is Bretton Woods 3, a system surrounded by commodities. It's as if commodities are worth more than currency nowadays, and this is a rush to do so but not so fast that it creates attention. And this is how they suppress the paper price and then deliver it. Take possession of $571 million with the kilo bars in China when no one's looking off of the COMEX. This is a trend that I think you will see accelerate. And, um, you know, it's, it's the central banks largely. The big money who has not just the big money, but it's closest to the information. And, and it's interesting to me that this is being overlooked, this transition of, of gold and silver from west to east is a phenomenon that's real, and I think it's it's interesting to me just how under uh, the underestimation of the significance of this in the West to me is, is is shocking. Gold posts first weekly gain in four weeks as U.S. inflation slows, sparking rate cut hopes. European stock sell-offs and political turmoil in France further bolster gold's appeal to investors. Analysts foresee gold prices potentially reaching two thousand six hundred dollars to two thousand. $700 this year amid ongoing central bank purchases. If they cut, inflation is going to roar. And everything they've told us it has been the opposite of what they've told us. Go all the way back to, well, there is no inflation, and then it's transitory, whatever the hell that means. And then it's structural, but then it's under control, but then it's reared its head again. We're going to do four rate cuts for sure, <clears throat> maybe two. And now you're even hearing guys like the... Uh, the head of the Minneapolis Fed saying maybe we're even going to raise rates. Uh, I don't think you can believe anything that comes out of the Federal Reserve's mouth collectively. Uh, and I don't see them cutting rates. I think it's higher for longer. I mean, look, when you talk about inflation, when you talk about commitments, look, everyone talks about the 34, nearly $35 trillion debt, but that takes doesn't take into account, Kai, the unfunded liabilities of Medicare Part B, $99 trillion. Medicare Part D, the prescriptions, a twenty-two trillion. Social Security, seventy-seven trillion. Government, military pensions. Who the hell is going to pay for that? How about the fifteen to seventeen million people, depending upon which person you listen to, in terms of unofficial number of people entering this country illegally? Who's going to pay for their schooling, their food, their housing, their their you know their medical? The the amount of commitments that we have are extraordinary. So when you talk about reigniting the inflation engine, I mean, it's already here. It's ignited. The amount of money that's been created in the past several years is, is extreme, hasn't even worked its way through the system yet. So if we do cut, to me, what it really signals to the rest of the world is we've given up on austerity. We've given up on normalizing our balance sheet ever. And if we do cut, I think you can just look for massive, massive uh, re igniting of, of inflation that becomes far more apparent than it already is by the lying CPI numbers where they exclude things like coffee, which is up 80% in the last year. Oh, let's pull it out and replace it with tea. The, the way that they lie to us about what inflation really is, is bad enough. But I think that that cutting is a problem where you're going to have to wonder who the hell is going to be foolish enough to buy our treasuries. And these large amount of treasuries, a, a trillion dollars worth every quarter to finance our, our addiction to spending, who's going to take it? Gold marked its first weekly gain in four weeks, spurred by signs of slowing inflation in the U.S., which raised hopes for a potential rate cut later this year. European stock sell-offs and political turmoil in France further bolstered gold's appeal. As we close the week, traders are eyeing future price movements amidst evolving economic indicators and geopolitical developments. This week, data indicated a significant shift in U.S. inflation trends. Consumer prices were unchanged in May for the first time in nearly two years, and producer prices unexpectedly declined. Consequently, traders adjusted their expectations for interest rate cuts, 
now pricing in about 52 basis points of cuts by December, up from 37 basis points last week. This shift was primarily driven by softer inflation data, contrasting with earlier pessimism following a stronger-than-expected jobs report. The Federal Reserve's recent policy meeting, where it maintained current interest rates, showcased a median dot plot, projecting just one quarter-point cut. Despite this conservative projection, the market's reaction suggests a broader anticipation of monetary easing, enhancing gold's attractiveness as a non-yielding asset. Gold's outlook remains bullish, although a climb to $3,000 per ounce appears unlikely in the short term. The fundamental case for gold is robust, supported by expectations of monetary easing and geopolitical uncertainties. Analysts foresee prices potentially reaching $2,600 to $2,700 per ounce this year, driven by continued central bank buying and safe haven demand. The upcoming weeks will be critical as investors seek clarity on the Federal Reserve's interest rate decisions and monitor geopolitical developments. With the U.S. elections approaching and ongoing turmoil in Europe, additional market volatility is expected. While substantial gains have been made, surpassing the $3,000 mark would require a significant surge, given the substantial growth already witnessed this year. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.